really need to get a haircut soon. It's getting way too long. Anyway, greetings, Mr. Oaks here with yet another video. Anyway, today's video is about the Batman cartoon. I don't usually talk about this cartoon, so I figured it was about time. Now that show famously skipped using several classic major Batman villains. And this video's topic is specifically about that. What five villains I think should have been used on that show which would have made that show better. This topic was actually suggested by a fan back in that Q&A video I made. Unfortunately I can't remember who it was who suggested it so I do apologize for that. But thank you for this video idea suggestion. Now it's gonna be five villains but I'm not gonna rank them in any specific order. And the first one I wanna bring up is the Scarecrow. Now the Scarecrow was apparently supposed to be on the show or something, I don't know. Because there does exist concept art of him, what he would have looked like if he had appeared on the show. But of course they had that famous bat embargo that they had going on with Warner Brothers at the time and maybe they still do, I'm not really sure. This weird rule that a character can't appear in a movie and a TV show at the same time, but it only applies to some characters. It's just so strange, I don't really get it at all. So the show began airing in 2004, right? And of course in 2005 we got the movie Batman Begins, which features the Scarecrow as one of the two villains. And so obviously these two projects were in production at the same time. And Warner Brothers, you know, knew that Scarecrow was gonna be in this big movie. So they did not allow the creators of the cartoon to feature Crane as a villain on the show. Again, makes absolutely no sense. But they made concept art for him anyway, I don't really know, that part is a bit confusing. A Scarecrow is my second favorite Batman villain, so obviously the idea that he's not on the show makes me like it a bit less. I really would have liked to have seen Scarecrow on that show and what they would have done with him. While they did overall not do the villains as well as the animated series did, they still did some of them pretty well, like Catwoman and the Riddler and the Penguin and even the Joker, even though he looks like crap. Well, a lot of them look like crap. And Scarecrow was one of the villains on the animated series. It wasn't fantastic, he was pretty good. He was uh, great even, I would say, but he was not as amazing as many of the other villains, so it would have been really interesting to see if the Batman cartoon could have actually made him better, maybe it could have. But unfortunately because of that stupid bat embargo, that never happened and who knows what he would have been like on that show. And the next one I want to talk about is a very similar case, Ra's al Ghul. Now of course Ra's al Ghul also appears in Batman Begins, so he was excluded. For the very same reasons as the Scarecrow was. Again, that ridiculous bat embargo rule. <laughs> I'll never understand it. It makes absolutely no sense. Now, I recently talked about the fact that I don't think Ra's al Ghul should be a Batman villain. So why in the name of God am I sitting here now saying that he should have appeared on this Batman show? Well, I actually think he would have fitted in this show more than he would have in a lot of other shows like Batman the Animated Series. The Batman had a lot more focus on action and martial arts stuff than the Animated Series did. And there was a lot of ninja stuff and that kind of thing. And I mean, even the Penguin was a martial artist on that show. So a guy like Ra's al Ghul, a master martial artist with a legion of ninjas, that would have been perfect for this show. And since this show did a lot of villains radically different from what they're usually portrayed, like Mr. Freeze for instance, maybe they would have done the same with Ra's, maybe they would have made him fit more in the Batman world. It would have been interesting to see if they could have done that, if they could have pulled it off. Maybe this show actually could have made me feel that this guy is a Batman villain, he should be a Batman villain. It's possible. So yeah, I think it's actually a really a, a big shame that Ra's al Ghul did not appear on the show, even though I'm not really the biggest fan of him. The next one I want to talk about is the big one, especially for me, Two-Face. I watched the first two seasons as they were being aired back when I was a teenager, and I remember every single episode just waiting for Harvey Dent to appear. 
Every time there was a scene in a courtroom and there were lawyers and stuff, I was always wondering, is that, is that guy Harvey Dent? Is, is this Harvey Dent? But he never appeared and it annoyed me so much that I eventually just stopped watching it. <laughs> Well that, and I also grew too old. I got into that age when you think that cartoons and that kind of stuff is silly and too childish. You have that brief period in your teens where you kind of shy away from that kind of stuff. But then you go back into it. So I miss the later seasons. But yeah, I specifically remember always waiting for him to appear. And people say they kind of replaced him with Ethan Bennett, that character who becomes a version of Clayface. Kinda, I guess. He's an ally of Batman, a friend of Bruce Wayne even, but then he tragically becomes a villain. It's similar to Two-Face's story, but I mean, he's still not Two-Face. I feel like you could have done Two-Face as well. You could have had them both on the show. And there really is no explanation for why Two-Face didn't appear, because he's not in Batman Begins. A lot of people still say though that it's because of the Bat embargo, because he appeared in The Dark Knight. But The Dark Knight was so much later in 2008 and it was not at all in production when production started on The Batman. I mean, when that movie came out, uh, The Batman was basically over. So I don't really get that and people say that, well, WB knew that Nolan was gonna use him in a second movie already back then. Well, they didn't really because Nolan wasn't even sure he was gonna make a second movie. He always takes one movie at a time. He said that in multiple interviews. When he made Batman Begins, he only had Batman Begins in mind. No Dark Knight. And so really back in 2004, 2005, WB had no clue they were gonna make a Batman movie with Two-Face in it in 2008. So this bat embargo explanation really doesn't make any sense to me. Really would have been interesting to see what the Batman could have done with Two-Face, considering he's a similar case to Mr. Freeze, where the animated series did him so perfectly. Like, what were they gonna do with him? Maybe that's why they ended up not using him, because they were too afraid. They couldn't top the animated series. They tried with uh, Mr. Freeze and completely failed. Nobody really likes that version. Maybe that's the actual reason. They were too afraid to use him and they just kind of blame it on this bat embargo thing and it isn't actually true. I think that could actually be the real reason. I'm not sure though, of course. That's just a theory. But yeah, this cartoon not featuring Two-Face is obviously a big minus for me. I mean, the show doesn't feature my two favorite villains, Two-Face and Scarecrow. So that's always played a part in me not liking it quite as much as a lot of other people do. It's not the only reason, of course, there are a lot of reasons, but it is one of the reasons. Anyway, let's move on to the next villain, and that is the Mad Hatter. Yes, a lot of people actually f forget that, wait, the Mad Hatter wasn't on the show either. Because often people talk about Two-Face and the Scarecrow not being on the show, that's often talked about among fans. But uh, not Mad Hatter, we often forget that he was also excluded, and for no real reason either, because where was he in any movie back then? He still hasn't appeared in any movie. And there are some really far-fetched theories, again about the Bat embargo, that uh, Nolan was originally planning on using the Mad Hatter in The Dark Knight Rises. I mean, come on. And that's why he didn't appear on the show? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like I just said, Nolan takes one movie at a time. Back in those days when he was making Batman Begins, he had no clue he was ever gonna make any Dark Knight Rises, let alone what villain he was gonna use. And even so, if he had some kind of faint idea of planning on using the Mad Hatter several years later in a movie, that's no reason to not use him back then, because it would have been when the show was cancelled anyway. So the bat embargo thing for the Mad Hatter makes absolutely no sense. I don't believe that theory at all. That cannot be the reason he wasn't on the show. So why wasn't he on the show? I have no clue. Again, maybe it's again related to the animated series. That theory again of mine, uh, that that series made him so well and they just were too afraid to try and top that because again they failed with Mr. Freeze. 
Maybe that's why, uh, I don't, it's again just a theory, I'm not claiming it to be that way, I'm just saying that maybe it is. Because I can't really think of any other reason why not use the Mad Hatter. I mean, he's a mainstay in the Batman Rogues Gallery. He's appeared in most Batman shows. He appeared in a 60s TV show, he appeared in a 60s cartoon show, and he of course appeared in the animated series, but not in the Batman. Why? And of course, again, as with all the other ones, it would have been really interesting to see what this show could have done with the character. But alas, we did not get that. And finally, the last villain I want to talk about that I feel should have been on the show, and that is... <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, but I'm actually serious. Don't laugh. Okay, don't laugh. Hush. Yeah, I'm serious. I really would have liked to have seen Hush on the Batman. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. This is not a prank. It's not a troll. I'm being 100% serious. I would have liked Hush to have been on the Batman. And I'm very surprised that he wasn't, because Hush at the time was the, the new big thing, just like Bane in the mid 90s. And he appeared on the animated series because of that, even though he was brand new. And Hush, the Hush storyline, came out in 2003, and the show started airing in 2004. Why didn't he appear in like the second season? He was the new big thing at the time, everybody was just crazy about Hush. It doesn't really make any sense. Now why would I, a Hush hater, want to see Hush on this cartoon? Well, the same reason as all the other ones. It would have been interesting to see what they could have done with him. And as far as I know, Hush has not appeared in a single cartoon show. That's never happened. I would like to see that happen, because whenever a character is adapted in other media, there's always chance for improvement. The Batman could potentially have made Hush a much better character. The show could have reinvented him just like Batman the Animated Series did for Mr. Freeze and the Mad Hatter. Hush could have gotten the Mr. Freeze treatment on the Batman. I mean, who knows? Anything's possible as long as they appear. And if that had happened, I may have never made that Hush is a Stinky Poo video, instead I might have been a Hush fan. I actually don't think Hush is a hopeless case of a character. I think he definitely has potential there that you can take and kind of rebuild him into something very different, but still keeping the sort of basics. I mean, he's not a lost cause. He can be made good, and but nobody has really tried. The only time someone kind of tried was in the Arkham games, that was really a small thing. Yeah, it's kind of strange, considering a character has so many fans and his original story is so beloved, nobody really ever wants to use Hush in the adaptations. Well, here's hoping he appears in the upcoming Batman cartoon, Batman the Cape Crusader, and that they actually do give him the Mr. Freeze treatment. I would really like to see that. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if you would also have liked to have seen these five villains on the show. And of course, if you can think of other villains that you would have liked on the show, write that down as well. I might have missed someone. And naturally, as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.